What's a secret you'll never tell your partner, but are willing to tell strangers on Reddit? That she is far more similar to her mother and sisters than she would want to believe. This is my wife. Every time she's complaining to me about her mom and sister I just have to keep my mouth shut because she complains about them doing stuff she does all the time. Who wants to admit they ate 9 cans of ravioli? I mean, nobody wants to admit they ate 9 cans of ravioli, but I did. I'm ashamed of myself. The first can doesn't count, then you get to the second and third. Fourth and fifth I think I burnt with the blowtorch, and then I just kept eating. I shed my pants two days ago. The one time, when she and I first got together, and she spent the night I made it very clear I wanted her to leave in the morning. She was uncomfortable, and brought it up later, because of my behavior. I'll never tell her it's, because since I only had one bathroom at the apartment, and she was on the toilet that morning forever, it probably wasn't that long, just had time, and my ass runs on its own schedule I had to shit in a small trash can on the back patio area I had. I had a high fence so no one could see, but there was a mess I needed to clean, both outside and on myself. But of course when she's out of the bathroom she has no idea and is asking about breakfast or whatever while I'm covered in poo. After she left I tossed my clothes and the trash can in the dumpster and took a long shower. And she also doesn't know that's the reason I've insisted any apartment we live in has two bathrooms. We've lived in four apartments together and everyone has had two bathrooms. Because I'm not doing that again. The wholesome answer? That our youngest son's first word wasn't mama. She was having a busy time at work and already felt guilty about not being home as much. Naturally he spent most time with me, so his first word was papa. I kept my mouth shut and waited until he said mama and celebrated that as his first word. My wife used to work in Childka and that was rule hash one with newborns. They are mute until the mom says they said their first word. Then they are chatterboxes. Edit for parents. Please ignore this and return to the ignorance that you were always there for your child's firsts. Edit for caretakers. Shit, sorry for making your job harder now. Didn't expect this to blow up. That I know the word she's looking for, but it's more fun to hear her rattle off increasingly ridiculous, sometimes made up words instead. Wholesome Reddit is always a nice surprise. My best friend is a badger, and I feed him sweet corn every morning at 5.20am. Edit, wow this really blew up, me and my badger friend Lucius appreciate all the support. This you need to tell your partner, in order to avoid a Shakespearean level tragedy. I called pest control honey, took care of it. When he was away for work for 4 months, and I was working full time and single parenting, and depressed f one morning I hurried our kid, 3, out to the car before daycare with my hands full of stuff. I put everything in the car, put it in gear, and looked over my shoulder to back up. I backed up two feet and hit the brakes. I didn't put our kid in the car, I was looking at an empty car seat. My toddler was standing beside his door on the passenger side waiting for me, and now he was crying cause he thought I was ditching him. If I hadn't looked over my shoulder, I could have run over our kid. Blame sleep deprivation and all the other shit going on, but mom guilt still eats me alive when I think about those two feet. And my husband will never know, because I don't ever want him to think I'm a bad mom, or know exactly how bad it was for me while he was away. TLDR. Almost ran over my own kid. You're not a bad mom. Shit like that just happens. You would be a bad mom if you didn't feel bad about it. I never paid for her engagement ring. I went to a custom jeweler to have her ring made. It's a beautiful piece, and she loves it dearly, and it certainly wasn't cheap, appraised and insured for around dollar sign 10k. The jeweler was dealing with a lot of family issues at the time, and was incredibly disorganized. I went to pick up the ring, and brought my checkbook to pay for it, and when she handed me the ring I took it out, and asked her who to make the check out to. She said oh no don't worry about it right now, just send me a check in the mail. I thought that was strange, but sure okay. She then hurried off to help another customer and I left. But she never told me what the final price was. For the next 6 months, I texted and called the jeweler asking hey just tell me what amount to put and I'll mail you the check. And there was always a reason she couldn't tell me oh sorry I'm out right now, I'll find it and text you later. Her shop was a few hours away from where I live, so it wasn't feasible to stop by and handle it in person. 
I tried for 6 months, but after that I stopped calling slash texting, and just figured I got the ring for free. I wouldn't tell my spouse, because I don't want her to think I took advantage of the situation, or that somehow the ring isn't as back quote meaningful, because I didn't pay for it. I faked the first 6 orgasms with her. I just wasn't going to come due to anxiety, but I knew she'd be so self-conscious to the point of dumping me if I didn't. So I pulled out, and came in a towel or sock. Eventually I got there with her after the nerves calmed, but I'm taking that secret to the fucking gradle mayo. Edit. One time I even prepped a towel, by squirting some lotion in it, and showed her how much she made me come, because I'm a liar and a freak. Babe, why does your cum smell like cocoa butter? I'm really tired of everything. Same dude but I encourage you to talk to them about it. We don't need to feel these things alone. I've been so depressed lately. I do not like my job. I have crippling anxiety driving into work every day. I'm in six figure debt, so I can't leave. I can't provide the life my family deserves, and it's only going to get tighter in coming months. I cry most days. My wife and son are the only things in my life keeping me going. They do make me happy though it's a sad happy, because I feel like I'm letting them down. My wife knows I'm not myself, but I won't tell her how bad things are. I know it will get better, but it's very hard right now. My friend, that sounds like horrible circumstances to be in right now. Please, do me a favor and open up to her, even if it's just a little, about how you feel. If she loves you like you love her, she wants to know how you really feel, and she will want to help you. Try to fight the depression, and the circumstances you are in, together. Don't let depression cut you off from the people around you, because depression is a liar, and will try to isolate you. I make a shitload of gibberish vocalizations, when I'm home alone. No fucking clue why, just some weird fake language I've been spewing since childhood. Edit. Transliteration attempt. Sabionionis kartesh kitavan. Sago kitsiva. Pragish. This kind of shit. Constantly, in a sort of Russian slash Arabic hybrid intonation. Almost entirely meaningless and 90% improvised apart from a few words that have attached themselves to specific objects slash emotions over the years. I got our toddler out of bed one morning and went to do a sniff test of there, but to see if they had put overnight, and when I lifted my child up I stuck their head in the ceiling fan. Oh and the time I forgot to put the car in park with them in it. I can't remember the last time I was genuinely happy more than just an in the moment feeling due to something happening. My default emotion is just depressed slash tired. You shouldn't have to keep that kind of thing hidden. There obviously is a point of oversharing slash burdening, but your partner should know about your general feelings, so they can better support you. I feel the same way and I only managed to start seeking real help cause my partner knew, and helped me to remember, and set up appointment CTC. What I actually paid for my woodworking tools. Edit. Obligatory RIP in box. As a few have pointed out, this absolutely applies to pretty much any hobby. And I'll put it here, since so many are asking, but I don't actually keep track of how much I've spent over the years, but just the big expensive ones I remember I'm over 5k already. Then all the smaller tools, chisels, hand planes, and ultimately I should include the cost of running a 220v single phase outlet for my jointer, and more than I really want to admit to myself. But the joy and sense of accomplishment I get on the completed pieces are worth every penny spent. It really is my happy place. As a guitarist, my biggest fear is that after I die, my wife will sell my guitars for what I told her I paid for them. Edit. I feel like I should probably state for the record that this is a long-standing joke in the musician community. My wife actually bought me two of my guitars. She knows how much they are worth. Lol. My nieces don't like the aquarium. I just constantly took them there because I thought my now girlfriend who works there, was pretty and thought, if she saw me constantly taking them it'd lead to us talking. Good call. Probably shouldn't tell your wife about your aquarium girlfriend. The iron bar in the garage isn't a pry bar, it's a manhole cover remover and I have explored, and will explore more. I hope you are using a gas monitor when you go into sewer slash storms as. Toxic gases are no joke in confined spaces. Using my alt, because she follows my main account. My girlfriend of 5 years has been deaf since she was 6. She reads lips pretty well, but prefers sign language. 
I didn't know a single sign when I met her, but I could tell right away there was something between us, so I started learning after I got home from our first date. Fast forward a few years, I'm now fluent in ASL, and we use it to talk almost exclusively. When she's not looking though, I talk to her, even though she can't hear me or see my lips to read. I tell her how much I love her, how I'm going to marry her someday, how beautiful she is, etc. I've even been practicing proposing, so it's not so terrifying when I actually do it. She has no idea, and I plan to keep it that way. Now I got her the entire thread looking for a woman that has regained her hearing after being deaf, since six and doesn't want to tell anyone. I'm terrified that my partner will die because I know I'm not really a functional adult outside of my work. I'm good for playing with the kids, bringing in a decent income and making food, but the idea of single parenting and taking care of everything fills me with existential dread I have a hard time describing. Is it the thought of losing your partner and the resulting grief or the thought of having to function and do mundane tasks day after day that scares you? I probably didn't word this the best way possible, but I think you'll understand what I mean. Sometimes when we play Maria Cut, I pretend to fail at the end so she can win. I love my wife, but I would never sandbag Mario Kart. If she wants to win she has to earn it. If not for my partner and my family, I would have killed myself a long time ago. They are literally what I live for, and I can't tell them that because they would worry about me so much. Edit, I'm not actively suicidal, and I will not harm myself in the foreseeable future. I'm right there with you. If something ever happened to them, I fear I would turn the lights off within an hour know me but my friend. So his wife was really sick, but was also extremely stubborn and religious she believed that God will heal her, so he came to me and asked for a few of my sleeping pills. They're really strong and get you into a deep sleep quickly. So puts the pills in her drink, like clockwork in 30 minutes she's out cold he then asks me to help him get her to hospital. Next morning she wakes up in the hospital. Good thing too course on top of that sickness she had, she had stage 1 cancer she survived, and it's all good now. But he mad me swear I don't tell her what we did. What did you guys tell her when she woke up about why she's in the hospital? I pissed myself on accident trying to not be a 2 trip bitch running my groceries up to my apartment. You avoided being a 2 trip bitch by becoming a pussy bitch. At least you ain't no punk bitch. I'm disabled, he works and brings home the bag. We do get disability pay, so it's still two incomes. I mostly clean, but my health gets in the way a lot. But man, I don't think I can ever tell him just how guilty I feel over my inability to consistently contribute. I hate that my disability and health overshadow some days. He gets home from work, and the minute he sees how sick I feel that day he drops everything and ignores his own exhaustion to fuss over me. He should be able to come home to a meal cooked and a relaxing night of sitting on his ass before the next day of work. Sometimes he does get that, but a lot of times it's just us making food together and cuddling and gaming rather than me being able to take care of him. I hate it deeply. Having a partner who cares for you above his own wants and needs is a special gift. Cherish him. Feeling guilty is completely normal. Living with a disability is really hard. I would encourage communication with him. Let him know how you feel, and also how much you notice and appreciate him. That he legit saved my life. He's a nervous humble guy who doesn't like undue pressure or praise, so I keep it to myself just how bad off I was before he showed up. Because even in the aftermath of my mom's death and even in the face of some pretty nasty health problems, which I was just letting slide, because I was so depressed I was kind of hoping they'd kill me, I was very very good at smiling and being charming. Three years of taking care of a terminally ill parent taught me how to smile and bear it and faint positivity even when you're running on empty. And I never felt like I could be anything other than the fixer, the daughter, the person who always knows what to say, the reliable one, they who has every answer and can make bad feelings go away by just fixing the problem for you. I was not allowed to be negative, ever. But he legit came in and helped me with mom's estate and Sheila aided me into getting out of a dead end career and put a stake in the heart of some severely toxic relationships I had and even helped me budget so I could finally afford health insurance which wasn't a moment too soon because I caught shit right in the nick of time and he just kind of did it.
In his mind it was nothing much, because you were on the right track, but you had a lot on your plate and needed help. And I just nod, and agree because what else do I say, I actually wasn't. I was just going to let myself die, because I was exhausted and miserable, smiles aside. Thanks for intervening. Our cat didn't break the towel rack. I did. I was pretending to be fighting zombies and grabbed it, and, ripped the goddamn thing off the wall. I heard her coming to check out the noise, and looked down at my cat. She came into the bathroom to me asking my cat why, did you think the towel rack could hold your weight? You silly cat. I think it's totally reasonable to be pretending to be fighting zombies, but maybe you got a little too immersed in said fighting. That the thing that made me realize that I was in love with her is, when I was taking a shower and got done, I walked into the room and she must not have heard me get out. She was laying on her side on the bed with her eyes closed, and she was picking her nose. I didn't want to embarrass her, so I stepped back out, and from a distance, asked where I set my clean clothes as I was walking back in, to make it seem like I was just coming in. She was visibly startled and quickly stopped, but continued to lay there with her eyes closed. I pretended that I saw nothing, but I couldn't help but smile. It was such an innocent and human moment. I have no idea why, but it made me realize right then and there that I loved everything about her. As silly as that moment was, there was a beauty in it, and I cherish that memory. The time I had intercourse with a snowman in a ditch behind my house. Though it was innocent, it's not something I'd talk about with anyone, except the thousands of redditors and millions people who saw the story I posted here that someone put on YouTube. Anyway, I guess I could tell it again. So, I believe it was March 1993 and a huge blizzard swept the east coast. I was young, bored and extremely horny. I didn't know then what exactly it was that I was feeling, but knew that it was normal for my age. Well, we were out of school for what must have been three weeks, but felt like an eternity. I wasn't around anyone my age, there were no girls in my neighborhood and obviously no internet for browsing of a certain kind, but even if there was, I'd definitely be too afraid to attempt it. One evening before dark, I decided enough was enough, and I couldn't handle the urge anymore. I had been holding back for weeks, because I was too embarrassed to do anything in the bathroom the guilt and anxiety of someone catching me was too much. My room wasn't an option, because the door didn't lock, and when my door was shut someone would ask why or just open it. It was far too risky, and I couldn't jeopardize my reputation of being the only normal one in my family. I threw on my snow clothes, and scuttled off into the wilderness behind my house with a plan. I wasn't sure I'd actually do it, but I wasn't exactly thinking straight either, for obvious reasons. Once I arrived at my destination I decided to slide down into a gully that was about 15 feet deep. I sat there for a few minutes and listened for footsteps in case someone saw me, but it was silent completely silent where I could almost hear my inner voice say, don't do it man. This is the moment of no return I told myself. I was like a runaway train never going back, wrong way on a one way track. Anyway, I got to work and started shaping snow into a female body. She had boobs, curves and the necessary inlet. I unzipped and went ahead with the task that lie before me, and within a minute or so it was all over, a few seconds of guilt and shame overcame me as I zipped up and erased the evidence. I crawled out of the gully back through the woods to my house. I went to my room and tried my best to forget her, but to my surprise, that would be impossible and every time it snows, I still think of her. You are my fucking hero. That's no lady, you gotta tell your partner about it. I have been molested four times by four different old guys, and I'm male. I'm so sorry, that sounds very upsetting. I hope you've been able to heal from your experiences, or are on that path. I dropped the diaper ash cream container on our daughter's head when she was like 8 days old. She let out this scream that still haunts me. When he came in the room to see what happened I lied and said I just dropped the lid on her. How big was this container? Toothpaste tube size. Quart. Gallon. My wife and I lost our future baby to a miscarriage. She once told me it felt like the universe was telling her I shouldn't be a dad. Two hearts stopped beating that day and I haven't told her how depressed I still am. Edit. I planted some roses in our garden in memory. I visit them every day. What? Why wasn't it the universe telling her she shouldn't be a mom? 
setting aside the fact that the universe wasn't telling either of you asterisk a n y t h i n g asterisk a huge percentage of pregnancies are miscarried just because that's as much as i love him with all my heart and soul even after a decade of being together his relentless negativity and pessimism does my head in sometimes man this this exactly with my so he doesn't realize he's doing it because of his depression i think but he's negative about everything, and we can't make it through a single life that had conversation without a long tangent about how much everything sucks and it's exhausting. Her cooking isn't very nice. I'm not cooking because I try to be nice. I cook because I want to eat something that doesn't taste like I'm rimming a feral raccoon with explosive diarrhea. Sorry honey, but you might need to learn how to cook if you want to cook. Cooking classes are a fun activity. Maybe hint to one of her friends to get her interested in going together, or you go with her. I know someone who vastly improved her cooking after taking a course with a friend. Some people are naturally awful cooks and have terrible instincts in that regard that need to be unlearned. Can we get a bit dark? We had our cat euthanized at our home. We buried him in the backyard. Hours and hours later, after my husband went to sleep, I dug up the box. I just wanted to make sure we didn't bury him alive. I just had this panic. I had to see that he was dead and safe. He was. I rebreed him and never told my husband. Rest easy my little love. It's not that I'd never tell her it's that I don't think we are at the part of the relationship where I can tell her just yet. But I love her. This is so lovely. Up for some unsolicited advice from someone who recently got to do the I love you thing. A couple of months ago I got some Dutch courage and said I'm falling for you. Since then he has said things like I adore you to pieces and I've reciprocated with stuff like I think the absolute world of you. Fast forward a couple of months, lying in bed together in the dark, and he whispers in my ear I think you already know this, but I love you to pieces. It was so special, so right, and I held his hand so tight as he hugged me, and I told him I loved him too. When the time is right it'll happen, but enjoy the build up. That I found the man who was speaking improperly to our very young daughter and made sure it wouldn't happen again. I assumed you meant he was using poor grammar around your daughter and as a result, teaching her bad habits, but looking at the other replies I might be mistaken.